Okay, so we've been doing transformations. So we have three main transformations that we've been using. We know about a rotation. which is a turn. We know about a reflection, which is a flip. And we know about a translation, which is a slide, right? So those are just the, the simple terms that we utilize to identify the transformation of a figure. These three transformations, a rotation, a reflection, and a translation, what happens when we do a transformation using one of those, some of those, or all of those, is that the figure will transform, but it will not what? It will not change size. So when we do these transformations, the sides, the angles, everything stays the same. The only thing we are changing is its what? Its location. So I'm just trying to get from one place to another. Nothing about my figure is changing, just my location is changing. So the last one that we're looking at now is the one that does change the size. It changes the size and that one is called a dilation. So a dilation is going to alter the size of the figure. It alters the size of the figure. So when we rotate, reflect, or translate, we are creating a congruent figure. So the transformation is congruent to the original when we use these. When we do a dilation, because we are changing the size of the figure, it is still remaining in that same shape but it is changing in size. So when we dilate, we are changing the size, right? So the size is changing. And so we are either enlarging it or we are reducing it. So enlarge means make it bigger, reduce it makes it smaller. So when we dilate a figure, the transformation is not congruent anymore because everything is not the same size. Now it is what we call similar. Similar because it is what it is basically the same shape, but a different size. So they are similar, but they are different sizes. So let's look at this. So we want to describe the effects of transformations. We've done translations, rotation, and reflections. Now we're doing our dilations. So using math principles, how do we enlarge or reduce a two-dimensional figure on a coordinate plane? So we can enlarge or reduce a two-dimensional uh, figure on a coordinate plane. And what do we do? We're going to use something that is called a scale factor. So a dilation is a transformation that enlarges or reduces a two-dimensional figure on the coordinate plane. The size will be determined by a scale factor. So when we want to make something bigger, we're going to use a scale factor greater than one. If we want to go smaller or reduce it, we are going to do a scale factor less than one. Basically, we are going to think about it as a fraction. So scale factor. Factor is a word that means multiply. So the scale is telling us how big or how small we want it. So if we want to double, double is like times a two. If we want to half something, so if I have $10 and you ask me for half of my money, you want to reduce my money by a half. So now how much would I have? Well, half of 10 is the same as saying if I multiply by a half. So let's look at this. If I multiply by a half, it becomes the same thing as what? Dividing by a two. So when we are reducing, we are reducing by that scale, fractional scale factor, which is the same as dividing by some value. If we want to enlarge, we are multiplying by a whole number, not a fraction. Okay. So given a figure here, so let's look at this. So 
So let's say we have a trapezoid. They tell us that we have a trapezoid. Our trapezoid. A is negative 2, 4. B is 2, 4. C is 4, negative 2. D is negative 4, 2. So we want to dilate this figure. So we're going to first, I want to make this figure, we're going to go ahead and go with the half. So I want to make this figure smaller. So I want to dilate this figure. So in order to dilate this figure in, re in a reduction, we are going to reduce it. So larger or smaller. So because I'm going smaller, I'm going to multiply by my scale factor. I want to reduce it by a half. So my scale factor is one half. So we would multiply every coordinate by one half. And to multiply by a half is the same thing as doing what? It's the same thing as essentially dividing by 2. It's the same thing as dividing by 2. So let's do this on our scratch paper. We need to be able to do it by writing it down. We don't have to do everything in our minds. We got to write for math. So negative 2, 4. 2, 4. 4, negative 2. Negative 4, 2. So here's where we are. Now we want to reduce this by a scale factor of one half. So that means I'm gonna multiply negative two times a half, four times a half. And that's gonna give us our new ordered pair, our A prime, right? Because the transformed figure is always named with a prime in it. So what do I end up with? I end up with negative one and two, which is essentially me just dividing each one of these by two right so you can write it however you want as long as you understand what's happening so times a half times a half and again remember what is that the same thing as doing what well it's the same thing as just multiplying or dividing by one half by a two if i multiply by half it's the same as dividing by a two so this is going to give me one comma two so then four times a half negative two times a half and this is just me showing you the work right if you need to show all the work and see all the steps you need to do whatever works best for you to make sure you can get the right answer so c prime is two negative one and this is just me doing the work to give an extra step for somebody that might need it so then d is going to be negative four times a half two times a half so remember, what is that saying? Negative 4 over 2 and 2 over 2. So what's d prime going to give us? Negative 2 comma 1. So now we have what our new shape is. So our, our figure is negative 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1. So if we needed to, we could graph this, right, and look to see what this looks like if we needed to. But as long as we understand how to be able to get the coordinates, we know we can graph it because we can just graph the original image and then co connect those dots. Then we can graph the transformation. Let's just do that over here. So you should see if you can graph it. So you just draw your own grids and it won't be perfect because we don't have a perfect grid. So negative two, four, two, four, four, negative two, negative four, two. All right, so that's A, B, C, and D. All right, so now let's do our transformation. So the transform figure says negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2. 
1, 2, 2, negative 1. Oh, my poor little trapezoid, because I didn't even go through the line right. Look at this. I didn't go directly through 2. All right, and then negative. Oh, I did that backwards. 2, negative. All right, and so this is the picture of our dilation. So it went from being this regular size to now I made it smaller and I dilated it as a reduction. All right, so you want to be able to make sure that you can do it by your ordered pairs. You got to make sure you can do it by your ordered pairs. All right, all right, so let's go back. Let's erase this. We have our original figure here. And now we want to do the transformation. The transformation that we want to do is we want to enlarge this. We want to enlarge this. And I want to do it and make it three times larger than it is. So if I want to make it three times larger, three times, that's what that X means, three times. So if it says three times, what does that mean? Well, the scale factor is three. So if the scale factor is three, that means that we would multiply every ordered pair, every coordinate by three. And that is going to tell us what our new coordinates are for our transformed, enlarged trapezoid. So A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So my, me personally, I think that you should pause the video and see if you can get it yourself. All right. So pause the video and see if you can get it yourself. All right, and then play me, and then you'll see, you can check it. All right, so here we go. If we want to enlarge it, I'm going to do it on another sheet of paper. So A, so I have where we are. We're at negative 2, 4. We're at 2, 4. We're at 4, negative 2. We're at negative 4, 2. So with this, we are going to multiply... every coordinate by three right so that's just me putting it on top like that and so i'm making a note of myself i'm essentially being a little lazy here but i think you can handle it so negative two times three gives us negative six four times three gives us 12 so my new ordered pair is negative six twelve for our, my new a so that's a prime my b prime 2 times 3, 4 times 3. So that gives me 6 times 12, right? So make sure we know. We're just multiplying by a scale factor of 3. All right? Then my C prime. Now, let me show this one on the steps. If you need to write it like this, you should. 4 times 3, negative 2 times 3. You need to do whatever you need to do to get it right, to make sure you understand. So my new C is 12, negative 6. And then my new D, so D prime is going to be negative 12, positive 6. All right, so how did you do? Did you get them? If you didn't get them, you need to make sure you know why. 12, negative 6, negative 12, 6. And so we have enlarged our trapezoid by a scale factor of 3. So when we use whole numbers, we are making it larger. We are increasing it. When we multiply by fact fractions, we are reducing it, making the figure smaller than it was. All right, that is how we dilate. That is how we dilate. All right, so let's do another one. All right, so here we have triangle BCD. B, 
is at one zero. C is at one one. D is at zero zero. We want to dilate by enlarging with a scale factor of five. This is a W, sorry. So enlarging by a scale factor of five. So dilate by enlarging by a scale factor of five. So if we want to enlarge this by a scale factor of five, scale factor means multiply. So that means we're going to multiply every coordinate by what? By five. So here we go. Pause it and see if you can do it. And then I'll pause me to check it. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to do it. All right. So when I do it, I multiply each component of every coordinate by five. So my B prime is five, zero. My C prime should be five, five. And my D prime should be zero, zero. Be careful. Don't forget anything times zero is zero. So let's see. What are we looking at? So our D prime is still at zero, zero. We got five, zero is B prime. And then we need five, five. So we've enlarged our figure. And looking at this, what kind of triangle is that? It looks like a what? A right triangle. Hopefully you got that right. All right. So we enlarged it by a scale factor of five. All right. So dilations. Dilations. All right. So now... If we wanted to go backwards, let's reduce it. We want to reduce it by a half. If we reduce it by a half, the scale factor is one half. So we reduce by a scale factor of a half. So reducing by a scale factor of a half, and let's write that word scale factor. If we want to reduce by a scale factor of one half, that means we're going to multiply and we're going to do it from the transformed. So we're not going back to B, C, D. We're going from B prime, C prime, D prime. So that means if we're going from the trans, the first transformation, that means the, this transformation is going to be labeled as B double prime, C double prime, D double prime, right? So if we're going from this transformation to, from this figure to the next transformation, it's the next level of the prime. If we're going from the original to a transformation, then that's just prime. But we're not going from our original. We're going from this transform figure, from this image, to create another image. And this image is created by reducing by a scale factor of a half. So here's why we did this. You cannot be afraid of getting a fraction. So one half of five. So what we're doing is we're looking at five over two. Because one half times five is five over two. So what does that give you? Just go with your decimal. You should know how to divide by a decimal. So that's going to give us two and a half, which is what? 2.5. And then one half times zero is zero. So then C prime, C double prime is multiplied one half times each component in C prime. So five times a half will give us another 2.5 and another 2.5. And then D prime, zero times a half is just zero. Zero times a half is just zero. So sometimes you may get a decimal and that's okay. So if we wanted to graph it, where would two and a half fall? Well, two and a half is in between what numbers? Two and three. So two and a half would just be graphed in between two and three. So 2.5 and zero would be here. B double prime. 
double find. 2.5, 2.5. So if this is 2.5, I would just go 1, 2, 2. In between, so this is 1, 2. So we'll do it about right here. And then 0, 0 is right here. So our transformed figure, so this is also D double prime, and then this is C double prime. So we had the original, then we transformed it by making it enlarged. So all of these would be considered similar triangles, but they are not congruent, and they are not congruent because what? The sides are not the same, but they are similar because they are close to each other. They are at, just at a different scale. Same figures, different sizes. Okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Um, make sure you just practice and make sure you, you cannot be afraid to practice with your order pairs. You cannot be afraid to practice with your order pairs.